The year 1970, not a sterling one in Alabama football history. It opened against the Southern Cal Trojans in Birmingham, and to put it mildly, the Trojans ran roughshod, 42 to 21. The main culprit, a big fullback named Sam Cunningham. He ripped the defense for 122 yards. Coach Paul Bear Bryant put it best, it was a hell of a way to start a new season and a new year. It didn't get much better for Bama. Regular season finale saw a loss to arch rival Auburn and the tide was six and five. There were bright spots. Johnny Musso began to show his All-American credentials and Bama did go to a bowl game, tying Oklahoma in the blue bonnet. Little did Tide fans know, but in the offseason, Coach Bryant would meet with Texas coach Darrell Royal to talk about a new offense, the wishbone option attack. It was destined to be the Tide offense of the 70s and lead to the glitter of three national championships. What better place to debut the new attack than the glitter capital of the world, Los Angeles, in the Coliseum against Southern Cal. Just one day shy of Coach Bryant's 58th birthday, the Tide would take on the Trojans in one of Bama's greatest games. The Alabama Sports Network and the Paul W. Bryant Museum present Bama's Greatest Games. Welcome to Bama's Greatest Games. I'm Tom Roberts, and the game we're looking at this time is the 1971 Southern Cal game, the introduction of the wishbone to Alabama football. Pretty good wishbone quarterback for the Crimson Tide is with us, and that's Jeff Rutledge. Jeff, I know a lot of folks who followed Alabama football during the 70s think probably they know all about the wishbone. There are some folks today who've never seen it. Tell me kind of the philosophy of, of what you do in the wishbone offense. The wishbone offense is a, is a great offense if executed properly. Uh, the downside of that, there's a lot of risk in fumbles because you're pitching the ball out so much. A lot of pressure is placed on the quarterback because you're reading the defense but it starts with your offensive line. If you've got a great offensive line, they're firing out low, they're establishing a line of scrimmage a couple yards down the field, then you can work down the line, you've got great running backs who can block first, mm -hmm. which is important, and then run the football, and then you also have wide receivers that have to block, then a quarterback that can run helps. Well, a quarterback that reads, and I think that's, a, in the wishbone offense, there was never a set play or very seldom a set play. You determined it as you went down the line making fakes and Most such. Most of the time. I know uh, a lot of times it's predetermined that you were not going to give the ball to the fullback, and then you were going to option off the end man on the line of scrimmage. But also there were times where you were going to read the tackle to the end, and if the tackle would go straight up field, you'd hand the ball to the fullback. Hmm. So it... I liked it when I knew I wasn't going to have to read that tackle because a lot of times he would close so fast and then the end's right there, that's when you can have the bad plays. Well, and that's when you can get clobbered too, I would think, Definitely. if, you're the, if you're the quarterback. You talked about the blocking of the backs, and we're going to see that as we go into this uh, Southern Cal game. For instance, Johnny Musso, great runner, but a tremendous blocker. Unbelievable blocker. Uh, you'll see that in the film, as you said. That's what makes the wishbone go. You've got to have unselfish backs who will block for the other guys. Mm -hmm. If you're going running right, then Johnny's going to block. If you're going left, then he's going to run the football. Both guys got to be unselfish and block for one another. Well, we're going to see that. The introduction of the wishbone. Let's go west for Alabama and Southern California, the season opener for 1971. The Crimson Tide's a 12-point underdog as it runs onto the field at the L.A. Coliseum, but the experts don't know that Bama's been working on the wishbone in closed practice sessions since early August. Captain Steve Higginbotham, Johnny Musso, Robin Parkhouse, and Rod Stakely are at midfield. They win the toss, and Bama elects to receive to start the 71 season. Mobile's Bobby McKinney drops back deep to take the kickoff from the Trojans. McKinney takes it at the eight yard line. He comes out, 
bounces off a tackle at the 28, then veers to the far sideline. In all, McKinney returns at 33 yards, and Bama has great field position at its own 41. Now the first play from the bone. Terry Davis runs it at quarterback. Steve Beck at fullback. Johnny Musso, Joe Labou, and Steve Basialia, the running backs, and David Bailey at wide receiver. On the first play, Davis simply hands it to Musso. Johnny takes it right up the middle for seven yards. And he does that behind a front line that has Jim Simmons at tight end. Tackles Jimmy Rosser and John Hanna. The guards, Jim Croft and Buddy Brown. Jimmy Grammer at center. Second and three at the tied 48. This time, Musso can get only a yard. Davis on the third and two. Davis keeping himself. Makes it across the 45. Davis to the 35. Davis down to the Southern California 31-yard line. That's right, John Forney, 19 on the play, and Terry takes it again, this time only three to the Trojan 29. Coach Bryant and staff decide to go to the air. Davis drops back, looks, finds Jim Simmons open. Play covers 16 yards. Bama has it first and 10 at the Trojan 13. Now less than three minutes into the game, the underdog tide hits the board first. Here's John Forney. Davis keeps. Now he pitches back. Two, Musso on the wide side. Musso to the five. Musso is out of bounds at about the one-yard line. So they say he got into the end zone. He made it into the end zone. So Johnny Musso takes a beautiful pitch back from Terry Davis and circles it for 13 yards and a TD in Alabama dramatically, suddenly, and spectacularly has driven 59 yards and is out front by a score of six to nothing. I think we can say John's happy and no doubt the guys in the white jerseys are happy. Remember, they were the underdogs in this football game. Bill Davis is on to kick the conversion. Just 2.52 gone. Alabama leads 7 Cal, 7 to nothing. Now here's Greg Gant to kick it off for the tie. It goes deep to Charles Hinton at the four-yard line. Hinton brings it back out to the 27. On defense, the tide goes with two of the best ends in Bama history, John Mitchell and Robin Parkhouse. Jeff Beard and Terry Rowell at the tackles on the first play. They hold rugged Sam Cunningham to only two yards. Now Cunningham ripped Bama for 122 in Birmingham in 1970, but in this night, linebackers Tom Searles, Jeff Rousey, and Chuck Strickland are ready for the big fullback. He manages only three on his second carry. The Bama secondary of Bobby McKinney, Steve Higginbotham, David McMakin, and Steve Wade sees its first pass now from Trojan quarterback Jimmy Jones. He's back, looks, hits Mike Morgan for 12 yards and a first down at the 44. Now the men of Troy along the offensive line open a gap for Lou Harris. He scampers 13 yards. The Trojans are in Bama territory at the 43. Once again, Cunningham up the middle for three. From the 40, tailback Harris shoots through a huge hole at right tackle. Rousey finally drags him down at the Bama 28. Cunningham with the ball again. Parkhouse stacks up the blocking. Strickland moves in to rack him up for a one-yard loss. Second and 11 at the 29. Jones drops back. Looking deep. He's throwing it. It's intercepted by Alabama at the 10-yard line. Coming back up to the 25, to the 30, to the 32-yard line. I believe that was Steve Wade. We'll have to wait until the Steve Wade intercepts at the Alabama 10-yard line, and he is mobbed. In all 22 yards on the return, Bama has the game's first turnover, the ball at 32, but an illegal motion penalty sets him back to the 27. So Davis decides to go to the air for the second time. This time, Terry hits back out of the backfield, and Ellis takes it nine yards to the 36. Directing the wishbone, Davis takes advantage of the defense, takes it himself for five yards. Third and one from the Bama 41. Musso gets the call for a dive over the middle. Johnny picks up six and a first down. Fullback back takes over, hitting the middle for a yard. Then it's back again behind center Grammer, this time for three yards to the 40. 
With five plays into the drive, midway the first quarter, Davis to the left. Great pitch to Joe LeBou. The Memphis Junior races 24 yards to a first down. Bama's threatening for a second time. The ball's at the SC 25. LeBou gets the call again, this time for six yards. And look at Musso blast a Trojan out of the way. Next up, it's Beck on the first option. He hits left guard for four and another first down at the Trojan 15. Now Southern Cal shows its defensive medal. John Grant reads the option just right, knocks Musso down for a nine yard loss. Davis working the bone again. This time the junior from Bogalusa makes four at left tackle. That brings up third and 15 at the 20. So Davis tries to go up top again. Looks downfield, nobody's there, so he has to settle for Musso out in the flats. Johnny's got the football, but he's got a defender there too and fails to gain on the play. So it's shades of the 60s. Bryant calling in a Davis to kick a field goal. Just like brothers Tim and Steve, sophomore Bill Davis follows tradition. A 37-yarder, Bama's on top, 10 to nothing. And it's a stunned Southern Cal crowd and team. Trojans were favored after all. Looks like they might get back into the game right here. Swan returns the kickoff 36 yards. He's out to the 39. David Watkins catches him from behind. Trojans keep it going. Harris through a gaping hole on the right side off for 15 yards. Parkhouse flags him down. Big Sam Cunningham follows suit going up the middle for three. But linebacker Strickland puts a stop to the Trojan flurry. He blitzes to stop Harris. No game. That brings up third down at the Bama 43. Jones going for a long gainer. Plenty of protection. Senior quarterback just overthrows 6'4 tight end Charles Young. That brings up the first punt of a game. Dave Boulware in to kick it away for 7 Cal. 39 yards later, the Trojans down it on the nine yard line. We're at the end of the first quarter. Alabama, a 10 to nothing lead of a Southern Cal. For Alabama fans, a great first quarter on the West Coast. And Jeff, I don't know how important it is, but I think it's pretty darn important the way the Tide took that opening drive and just marched it downfield for a touchdown. Especially when you're coming out with something they haven't seen before and you go down within two and a half minutes and you score the first touchdown, SC didn't know what hit them. Well, you and I talked uh, before the quarter about what the wishbone is. Let's watch it in action as we look at the, again, at the touchdown that Musso scored in the first quarter of this game. Tell us what makes it work here. Well, you can see Terry Davis takes it to the end and just pitches it to Johnny. And the guy coming up right now actually was not blocked. He was a linebacker that scraped, and Johnny just outran him to the end zone. We're going to look at it again, and you'll be able to see that Labu, and this is what you were talking about earlier also, the, the standpoint of blocking by the backs. Joe Labu just wipes out a guy on the corner. Well, that's what's key. He's unselfish. He knows to make this play work, but he's got to make his block. And you can see this linebacker coming right now. He was never blocked. The people just got in his way, and Johnny was fast enough to get in, you know, to the end zone and make a dive. Well, it's, it's a great way to start the football game. They come down on the opening possession. Bama's going to score again. The one thing that uh, the wishbone does, it seems so well, is control the clock. You just keep the football away from the other guys. Well, that's why coaches like it. Yeah. If you can keep the other team's offense off the field, then it's going to be hard for them to score. And Alabama's offense is, let's make something on first down, keep it second and short, then third and short. It's first down again, we start all over again. Very few passes, as you know. Yes. And uh, just makes it easy for the, the offense to control the football and keep it out of the other team's hands. So far, it's been successful in the seven Cal game. Bama's on top and set to go up by even more. The second quarter is next. Alabama and Southern California, 1971 in Los Angeles, truly one of Bama's greatest games. Tied on top after the first quarter. Jeff Rutledge, as we go into the second quarter of this football game, Bama's got it deep in its own territory. In fact, inside the 10-yard line. How does that change the philosophy? First as a coach, and then I want to get a quarterback's way of looking at it. Well, I think a coach's standpoint is going to be, let's make some positive yards. Let's not lose yards. If we have to punt, at least we've gotten out of our own territory a little bit and we're able to punt. From a quarterback standpoint, you're thinking, don't turn the ball over. Yeah. And in the wishbone especially, you're probably not going to call plays where there's a chance that you're going to pitch the ball out. Oh, I didn't think about that. Now, but let's go back to this coach-quarterback uh, situation. 
coach probably wants to be conservative. Quarterback wants to gamble a little bit? Not really. Oh, okay. I can never like personally to throw the ball backed up like that because it does put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback because you're thinking, I can't turn the ball over here. You're not as relaxed as you would say if you're at the 50-yard line. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's find out what Terry Davis did as we get back to the game, back to 1971, Southern Cal in L.A. Backed up at its own nine-yard line. Alabama opens the second quarter. Back going over right guard Buddy Brown for five yards. Second down. Davis takes the option left. Beck cuts back right for 10 and a first down. The tide's out of a hole, out to the 24. Musso up the middle for five. Now it's back at right tackle. He manages only a yard, bringing up third down. This time, Davis with the option. The pitch out to LeBou. And watch Joe ramble. 13 yards in all for LeBou. Alabama first down at the 43. Vachelia gets the call. He hits off right tackle for nine yards and gets into Trojan territory. From the SC 48, it's time for Bama to go to the air. Second down and one as they split man to the right. Terry Davis drops back, looks, throws. It is completed to David Bailey and out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. They mark it at the 33, a gain of 15. Now an illegal motion penalty set the tide back to the 38, but the penalty didn't stop the drive. Wishbone attack goes left again. LeBou on the pitch out from Davis. This time the Memphis Junior goes 18 yards, and the tide has a first down at the SC 20. Beck gets five right up the gut, and one play later, Bama gets a touchdown. From the wishbone, Davis keeping, giving now to Musso. Musso flashes his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Johnny Musso picking up where he left off last year and is hugged and mugged by his teammates. That was sort of a counter play off the wishbone, and Johnny took it in for nine. And Alabama leaps to our front, 16 to nothing. They were 12 point underdogs here in the Coliseum, and the Alabama bench is bedlam. Bill Davis kick makes it 17 to nothing Alabama and let's see if the Trojans can come back. Here's Swan returning Gantz kick. Lynn brings it out to the 27. Jeff Blitz knocks him down. On first down quarterback Jones goes with Harris at left guard for three yards. And now it's time for a big play by the Bama defense. Alabama shifts its defense around a little bit. Jimmy Jones pitches out to Cunningham. Cunningham sweeping in, and he is hit on a fine upright tackle by Higginbotham behind the line of scrimmage. Jones gets the Trojans right back into it. Look at him. He's back. Gets great pressure from Alabama, but gets away from Terry Rowell. Jones looking, trying to find somebody open. Finally spots Sam Cunningham. Bruising fullback turns it into a 12-yard gain and a first down at the 41 before Higginbotham finally brings him down for Alabama. Back to the ground now. Jones keeps it himself around left end. Bobby McKinney forces him out of bounds, just shy of the 50-yard line. Eight minutes left in the half. Harris goes right up the middle for four yards. It's first and 10-7 Cal at the Bama 47. Harris gets the call again, this time to the outside. He goes 16 yards to the Bama 31. Rousey and McKinney knock him out of bounds. Cunningham keeps the Trojan fans excited. A six-yard gain at left guard. Mitchell and Tom Shirless on the stop. Jones with a pitch out to Harris, but Jeff Beard and Wayne Hall hold him to just three yards. Third and one at the Bama 22. Cunningham, second effort, three yards. Mitchell and Rowell drag him down. Tenth play of a drive. Jones keeps it himself for five yards. Wait on the stop for Bama. At the tied 14, it's Cunningham again. Shirtless and Lanny Norris stop him, but he's inside the 10. Trojans first and goal at the nine. Mitchell and Patterson stop Harrison first down, but then the Trojans get on the board. Alabama with a six-man front. Jones drops back. He wants to throw. He's got a lot of time. He throws. Complete for a touchdown to tight end Charlie Young. Mike Ray kicks the extra point. Bama's lead is cut to 10. The tide's still on top, 17 to seven. We're just under four minutes from halftime now. Williams set to return the kickoff for Bama. 
It's a short one, and he gets it out to the 26-yard line. On first down, Davis rolls to the left, but manages only two yards before Willie Hall rolls him down. This time, Beck gets the call up the middle for five to a 33. And that brings up a big third down play. The keeper by Terry Davis. Davis gets his first down and gets up close to the 40-yard line. Mike McGear was there to help make the stop. Jim Croft was down blocking a fine play by Croft. A great play by Terry Davis who moves the ball out to the 40. For that point, little use David Knapp gets the call for three more yards. Clock moving toward the half. Davis gets Bama's 13th first down, going six yards to midfield. Knapp, a Birmingham junior, gets the call again, and he makes three to the Trojan 47. Tide's going to go to the air now, and that spells the end of this drive. Terry Davis throws. He, it's intercepted by Southern Cal at the round 40 yard line. Moving to the outside is Dyer. Dyer is going to go out of bounds in front of the Southern Cal bench at the 45 yard line. And Bruce Dyer was forced out of bounds. I believe that's Johnny Musla who made the force on him. And indeed it was Musa who managed to force him out of bounds. Just 22 seconds to go. Jones working quickly. Drops back and looks. It's Morgan for eight yards to the Bama 37. Seventeen seconds now. Jones again to pass. And look at this catch coming by Lynn Swan. He makes it and is clobbered by Strickland. Swan holds on, gets six more to the tied 19. Only seven seconds to go. Backup quarterback Ray comes in. He kicks a 37-yard field goal, and SC is only a touchdown behind. Just enough time left in the first half for the kickoff. Ray pooches it for the Trojans. David McMakin takes it at the 40, and we head to the locker room. Alabama leading seven cows, 17 to 10. So we're through 30 minutes in Los Angeles against the Seven Cal Trojans, and Jeff Rutledge, I would think they could safely say that Alabama caught Seven Cal by surprise with a wishbone. Oh, definitely. You could tell just by watching their defense. They didn't have a clue what was hitting them. But I think they're going to make some adjustments at halftime. I mean, they're going to have to, yeah. and then we're going to see what happens in the second half. Well, before that, let's go back and look at the, uh, at the second touchdown Alabama scored in this game. Same guy, Johnny Musso. But it, uh, it gives you another idea of the second part of the blocking. That's the offensive line. Well, you can just see the offensive line pushing these guys back. And that was the old belly play, one of the best plays the wishbone has. You have two blockers leading Johnny in there, and he just reads the blocks of his offensive line when he cuts back and goes in the end zone easily. One of those offensive linemen, and you might have saw him right there in the middle, is number 73, John Hanna who was uh, All-American at Alabama. You can see Hannah blocking there. Uh, pretty incredible offensive lineman, wasn't he? Well, I think so. He goes on into pro football and is a Hall of Famer. He's got great work habits. He worked hard. He's big. He's strong. He's fast. Puts the fear of little guys, especially when he would pull. Yeah. And a 175-pound guy coming up and having to take on John Hanna, I wouldn't want to do it. You know, I've read all kinds of surveys and such that rate him the greatest offensive lineman in pro history. You agree? I definitely agree. But John Hanna's a great one. Well, he and his offensive teammates, unfortunately, had to take a back seat to the defense in the second half. We'll be back with the third quarter in just a moment. Welcome back to Bama's Greatest Games, the Tide and the Trojans at Los Angeles in 1971. Bama's on top at halftime, 17 to 10. Jeff, you talked a little bit earlier about the adjustments that you have to make and I'm sure Southern Cal made some. I want to find out the, the way Coach Bryant treated halftime. Was he the guy that would come in and uh, preach hellfire and brimstone, or was he kind of calm? You never knew how Coach Bryant was going to be at halftime. When you would be ahead, you would think he was going to come in and say, way to go, good job. That's the time he would come in and chew you out. <laughs> then you'd come in, and you'd be behind in the ball game, and you'd think he's going to yell at you and scream at you, and he'd say, we got them right where we want them. You never knew what Coach Bryant was going to do at halftime. But we made a lot of adjustments. He had a great staff. You'd get with them, make the adjustments that had to be made, and then you'd go out the second half and hopefully put those to, to execution. 
those adjustments. Was it Coach Bryant who handed those out, or did he literally go to the offensive and defensive coaches? He pretty much left it up to the defensive and offensive coordinators to make those adjustments. They would talk about it, and then they'd come out and get with us and tell us what we had to do. Well, let's uh, see what kind of adjustments we have in the second half as we get to the third quarter with Bama leading the Trojans 17 to 10. Starting the second half, Trojans taking the kickoff and Hinton gets it one yard deep. Hinton brings it out and the appropriately named Blitz knocks him down at the 21. Quick look at first half stats, first downs, Bama 13, SC 10 on the ground, Tide has 195 yards, Trojans 104. Through the air, Bama with 40 and SC with 57. Cunningham has 25 of those rushing yards, he adds three more. Harris leads the Trojans with 68. He rips off right tackle. 17 yards later, it's Rousey and Higginbotham to bring him down. For the 11th time in the game, Cunningham with the ball. This time gets four to the 45. Jones goes with Harris again, but only three for the speedster before the stop by Strickland. On third down, Cunningham gets the call. Surlis makes a good open field tackle, but it's first down SC at the Bama 48. Now Jones goes up top to Morgan for 10 yards and a first down at the Tide, 38. Williams keeps him from going further. But Bama's defense gets its back up. Whole right side stops him for a one yard gain. Andy Cross leading the way. And now the Alabama defense is looking for a turnover. After all, the Trojans have it down at the Bama 37 yard line. He runs up, rolls to the right, looks. Is being chased by an Alabama tackler. He throws, it's intercepted by Alabama Higginbotham at the 20 yard line. Higginbotham brings it back and he's thrown out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Savannah gets the football back. And on first down, LeBou adds three to his halftime total of 43 yards. Clipping penalty sets Bama back to the 15, so Davis decides to go to the air. Terry looking out in the flat, gets it to Musso, but look at the Trojans' Willie Hall. He slams him down for a loss of two. On third down, the option goes right. LeBou gets the pitch out. Look at Joe go for 12 yards. But he's going to be short of the first down. That brings Gant out for his first punt of the night. Unfortunately, it goes off the side of his foot. SC gets great field position at the Tide 42. Immediately, Jones goes to Harris, and he gets three at left tackle. Now Harris gets much more. This time he shoots up the middle for 20 yards. Williams and Blitz stop him at the 19. Looks like the Trojans are headed for a score. Ben Swan out wide to the right. The pitch back going to Cunningham. Cunningham to the 20. Cunningham is hit. He fumbles the ball and Alabama recovers at the eight yard line. It's Williams on the recovery for the Tide. Bama the ball at its own eight. Look at John Hanna lead great blocking and Paul Spivey goes for 11 yards out to the 19. From the I formation, Spivey tries again, this time for only two. Now Bama's offense self-destructs, play goes left, Davis goes right, loses one. Third down for the 20, Davis runs the play again, this time everybody's headed in the same direction, but it's only a three yard gain. So Gantz back in for the punt. This one goes 37 yards, there's a fumble, but Seven Cal gets it back at the 39. Jones still directing the Trojan offense, goes to Harris for three yards, Hall hits him shoulder high. Jones tries the left side, but Williams is there for Bama, knocking him out of bounds for a one yard loss. On third down, Jones wants to throw the football again, but he gets great pressure, has to run. Patterson and David Watkins stop him short of the first down, that brings Bullwear on for another Trojan punt. 
He gets away a low liner, but covers only 35 yards, and Higginbotham is set to return his only punt of the day. Scottsboro senior heads to the near sideline, winds up with a 37-yard return. He's finally brought down by who else but Sam Cunningham for the Trojans. Alabama has great field position, but disaster strikes. Davis on the option, tries to pitch to Musso. Kent Carter's there for SC to tip it away. Skip Thomas claims it for the Trojans. SC's guilty of holding. The penalty sets them back to their own 15-yard line. Cunningham gets nine yards of that penalty back. He takes it right at right tackle. Coach John McKay sends in the call for a trick play. Charlie Young, the end around. Watkins isn't full. He hems in Young, and Parkhouse closes him out for a two-yard loss. It's third and relatively short, but quarterback Ray decides to air it out. The tie puts on pretty good pressure. Ray has to scramble, finally gets his pass away to Young, but look at Lanny Norris step in and bat it away. It's punting time again for the Trojans. This time, Bullware gets off a 48-yard punt. Way downfield, Williams gets the ball for Bama and starts looking for blockers. Williams winds up getting 16 yards out to the 47. For the first time in the second half, Musso gets the ball, showing great balance. Johnny gets eight into Trojan territory. Musso showing us that All-American style again. Gives the hip, takes it away, and goes eight yards for a first down at the 37. Michelle, you stop for no gain on the last play of a scoreless third quarter. It's Bama 17, Southern Cal 10. I think you could safely say defense took over in the third quarter of this football game. It was just turnovers start becoming a major factor in it. Well, I think you see on the wishbone side the bad part of yeah. the wishbone. You throw an interception, you throw, have a fumble on a pitch out. And then they threw interceptions to us as well. So the defense did take over. I think you saw the adjustments we talked about at halftime on both ends, and it showed on the defensive side. Well, I wanted to go back and show one of Alabama's interceptions of a Southern Cal pass. The reason I wanted to show it is because Jimmy Jones, uh, the quarterback, very good quarterback for Southern California, uh, rolls out to his right, and Robin Parkhouse does a great job of getting away from a blocker, and he's coming out here and he's almost on top of him, and John Vela just wipes him out. Got to be a, a defensive <laughs> lineman's nightmare. It is, but I think you still have to say that helps make the interception. Even though Parkhouse gets leveled, Jones sees the pressure, feels the pressure, and throws it up for grabs, basically. We got some more great defense coming up in the fourth quarter, so stay with us. We're ready for the fourth quarter. Bama and Seven Cal, Los Angeles, 1971. Jeff, when you go into the fourth quarter, and in this case, Bama's ahead 17 to 10, do you change your strategy, the way you play offense? I don't think you change the strategy, but you better dominate the fourth quarter. That's where the games are won and lost, especially in close ball games. And if you notice, on every Alabama team, when the fourth quarter comes around, everybody's got that yeah. four up in the air saying, this is our quarter, and this is where we're going to win it. That was obviously what Coach Bryant put in your mind over and over and over again. But did you also practice to the point where there was so much endurance that you knew from a, just a physical standpoint you're going to be able to play in the fourth quarter? Well, we were well-conditioned teams yeah. at Alabama. And that was responsibility went to Coach Bryant for that. And that's where we knew when the fourth quarter came around we were going to be fresher than the other guys. Was it sort of a, from all the practices you had, fourth quarter was a dream compared to all the workouts? <laughs> <laughs> you look forward to being in that fourth quarter. And you look forward to, at the end of that game, hopefully being on top. Well, we're ready now for the final 15 minutes. Bama and Southern Cal from 1971. 
Starting the fourth quarter, it's Musa who will get the first carry for the Tide. He takes the pitch out around right end and battles his way for four yards. Now Davis takes the option to the other side again to Musso. He's hit behind the line, but manages to get away for a two yard gain. Still Johnny short of the first down. So Gats back to punt for the Tide. He gets it away a 31 yarder if it goes out of the end zone. From the 20, Cunningham tries the right side and picks up three yards. And now it's just about time for another great play by that stingy Bama defense. From the split backfield, Jimmy Jones operates. He fakes inside, drops back, looking long. He is him for a moment, and he's going to be hit and drop. Back of the line of scrimmage at the nine-yard line. After the sack by Parkhouse, Jones pitches out to Hinton on third down. He manages only five yards, and Bama's going to get the ball back. Bullware sails the punt for 43, and the Tide has it at its own 43. On first down, watch John Hanna pancake a Trojan defender. Gets back free for a five-yard pickup. From the 48, Musso takes it into seven Cal territory, five yards close to a first down. Coach Bryant calls for a measurement, change market close, Official Charlie Moffitt signals first down Bama at the Trojan 48. Now it's the SC defense showing its strength. Keeping Davis from making the option pitch, he settles for a two yard loss. Again, the Trojans come up with a stop. Back in the middle gets only a yard. That brings up third down and Bama's hit with a clipping penalty. So it's back at its own 34. So Davis decides to keep it himself at right tackle. He squirms and tries hard, but cannot get the first down. So Gantz back in to kick it to the dangerous swan. The ball is kicked. It's coming down about the 25-yard line, gets an Alabama bounce. It's picked up by one man. He gets away from one tackler. He's splitting the wall to the 40. He's coming up to the 50. Away from one man, and he's hit down finally. 57 yards, Swan returned it, and the Trojans are in business at the Bama 28. Cunningham goes for four at left guard. On second down, Jeff Beard and Jeff Rousey stack up Harris for only a yard. Personal foul pushes the Trojans back to the 33, so Ray has to pass. He wants to go to Swan, but here's Parkhouse to force him to throw early. It goes incomplete. Now it's fourth down and Ray has to pass again. He sees Parkhouse coming one more time. Secondary has his receivers covered, so Ray decides to run. Strickland's there to stop him short for Bama and the tide takes over. Just six minutes to go in the ball game. Beck takes it right up the middle for two yards. And now it's time for the Italian Stallion. Harry Davis calls, rides it out, he pitches back. So Musso getting away from one tackler, breaks another one, and kicks it up to the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Finally pulling him down was Kent Carter and Skip Thomas. Plays good for 19 yards by Musso and a first down at the 43. Labou tries the middle again, and it's good for only a yard. Davis hooks up with Musso, this time around right in. Musso avoids a loss and literally drags Trojan defenders to a gain of four yards. Third and five, Davis tries the middle, gets only one, and so Gant has to kick it to Swan again. You recall he went 57 yards the last time he returned a punt. Not going to do it this time, though, because Marvin Barron and Musso are there to drop Swan in his tracks back at the Trojan six-yard line. Seven Cal, only three minutes to go. A broken play, but Jones gets five yards out to the 11. 
Now Jones goes back to pass. It's complete to Hinton on the sideline. Strickland forces him out of bounds at the 28. Now a year ago, it was Cunningham doing the number on Bama. Now it's Sam trying again. He breaks through for 15 yards before Williams and Rousey can knock him down. From the 43, Jones to Hinton. He's stacked up by Rowell for a three yard loss. Now Jones wants to go long, but Mitchell almost takes his head off. And the Trojan quarterback overthrows Edsel Garrison at the Bama 10. That brings up a big third down and a big Bama defensive play is coming. Jones dropping back, look. He is getting away and he's hit. He's fumbled and Alabama has recovered it at the 36 yard line. Stepping in and he's being mobbed. We're trying to identify him. I believe it was Terry Rowell. Indeed it was. Parkhouse caused the fumble. Bama has it at the Trojan 36. Minute 52 to go. Offense needs one first down. Davis starts it with a three yard pickup. I take it all the time in the world. Beck gets it up the middle for four. Third and three, it's Musso at center, but he manages only one. So on fourth down, Bama goes for it. Terry Davis calls his signal. Southern Cal almost jumping offside. To get to Musso, Musso is going to make that first down at the 25 yard line. Johnny Musso battled and clawed his way and makes the first down for Alabama with less than a minute to go. What a play, and how about this one? The quarterback's favorite play. Davis takes the snap, drops to a knee. His teammates are ready to give Coach Bryant a victory ride. Terry Davis dropping on the ball. The fans are counting it off. Five, four, three, two, one. Coach Bryant has won his 200th victory and re-enters the history book. And the joyous white jersey of Alabamians lead him across the field to Coach Johnny McKay. And what a moment of high drama it is. And what a great football game we have witnessed tonight as the Southern Cal Trojans, gallant in defeat, start off the field, Alabama delirious in victory, having turned the tide from a humiliation last year and done an absolutely magnificent job. And Alabama the kids are running off the field, <laughs> holding up saying, we're number one. <laughs> Now that you've seen virtually every play of the 1971 Alabama Southern California game, we wanted to replay some of the highlights of this one. It's a game that Alabama dominated almost from the outset. In fact, the Tide took the opening kickoff to a touchdown. And uh, it's the wishbone working to perfection, Jeff. Definitely. Just to basically take the play to the quarterback, takes the play to the end, pitches the ball, and Johnny just outruns him into the end zone. Great Musso, way to start the ball game. Musso, 13 yards for the touchdown there. Now, Bama had another drive in the first quarter of its stall, so Bill Davis came in and kicked the 27-yarder. And then in the second quarter, a 91-yard drive. And, Jeff, that's what the wishbone's known for, isn't it? Definitely, and that definitely takes something out of the defense. To go 91 yards, that defense was tired when the fourth quarter came around. Bama's defense, on the other hand, just was outstanding. Here's Jones being pressured by Parkhouse, who's going to get blindsided, but the pressure was enough. Jones downfield. Intercepted by Steve Higginbotham. Turnover is a huge, huge role in this ball game, Jeff. Definitely, and that's what uh, I think made the difference when the game was over. Well, Parkhouse is one of the guys who made a major difference. Robin, known as the Pink Panther, comes in on this play in the fourth quarter, knocks the ball loose. Terry Rowell's there to recover it. It was a truly a great victory for Alabama. 200th coaching win for Coach Bryant. Pretty good way to give him a, a 58th birthday present. Definitely. Uh, well, the thing that I liked about this one, Jeff, is that one of the things that always impressed me about Coach Bryant was his ability to change. Now, he had to, I guess he was persistent and sometimes kind of stubborn, willing to change, though. A major change going into the season to go to the wishbone. Definitely a big gamble. He had no clue if this was going to work or not going into this ball game. And if it doesn't work, he's going to get second guessed. Yeah. But Coach Bryant, being Coach Bryant, it worked, and it made him look like a genius. It's, a, it's an offense that, that stayed around for a while, too. Very viable at Alabama. Uh, this was 71, 79 Sugar Bowl. You were still playing the wishbone. Was it, uh, what was the, the reason it stuck around so long? You couldn't stop it. Okay. Defenses could not stop the wishbone. You might could stop the fullback, or you might could stop the quarterback or the running back, but you couldn't stop all of them at the same time. And if they did try to put 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage, then it opened up the big class play. 
Well, it was this one in, against Southern Cal seemed to be very vanilla, very straight. Obviously, refinements were added. Was that one of the keys every year, too, is adding something new? Definitely. I think this game, because it was new, they didn't want to try to put too much pressure on Terry Davis. I yeah. think they were going to give him a limited number of plays and just execute them properly. Then as the years go on, the defenses, you got to realize, were on the other side trying to figure out how to stop it. So the offense mm -hmm. had to come up with some more plays. And that just goes with coaching and watching film and coming up with new things. And uh, the passing game became a much bigger part of the wishbone attack, didn't it? Definitely, because like I said, they put 11 guys up uh -huh. on the line of scrimmage within eight yards. One-on-one -on -one with a cornerback, you know where you're going. He doesn't. Quarterback's dream. And that's why when I played, I would audible every chance I could when I had Ozzie Newsom out there one-on-one. -on -one. Doggone right. Well, Ozzie, a great player, uh, a bunch of greats who played for Alabama. That's the key to... The success the Crimson Tide's had down through the years and uh, uh, the reason there have been so many great games. Thanks for being with us, Jeff. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom. For Jeff Rutledge, I'm Tom Roberts. Thanks for joining us. Join us next time for one of Bama's greatest games.